and read the question. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. In that day, you will say, I will praise you, Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day, you will say, give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. Amen. Amen. The title of my message is Surely God is My Salvation. Key verse, verse 2. So let's read verse 2 together, uh, please. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, Lord himself is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. Heavenly Father, as we conclude the year 2023 and look forward to 2024, help us to conclude this year with a great hope, believing that God is my salvation. Have mercy on this sinner, clothe me with your grace so that I can serve this message, I pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. So today is the last day of 2023. We thank God for what he has done in 20, 2023. Surely, God has been our salvation. Is that your confession? God has been my salvation. And we look forward to the new year, 2024, believing that God will continue to be my salvation. So last week we learned that God sent Jesus to this world as a shoot from the stump of Jesse. Most people do not think of much when they look at the shoot, but it is exactly what the Christmas is about. Jesus came into this world as a baby in a manger. Yet this small, tiny baby grew, grew up to change the world, to fundamentally change the history of mankind uh, forever. So Jesus both divided the history from BC to AD. There is always hope, even when there is only a stump. We might have a stump like disappointments, like this year, for example. Some of you might have disappointment with the light having not turned out as we wanted. But there is always hope in Jesus. He's waiting to take root each, in each of our lives if we let him. Then he will bear a lot of fruit in and through us. So in chapter 12, we learn that we can rejoice when Jesus takes root in our hearts and grow. So first one begins with, in that day. In that day is the day God's glorious promise is fulfilled. It is the day when Jesus came to this world as a baby in a manger. So it was proclaimed to the shepherds by the angels on that first Christmas night. They announced, do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Then the sky burst open with angels praising God, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to man on whom his favor rests. So here, many people misunderstand peace on earth. They think that peace on earth means that there will be peace on earth among people. But that's not, here peace on earth is not a horizontal peace. The angel didn't say peace among men. Rather, it is a peace toward man from God. It is a vertical peace. So Charles Wesley got it right when he wrote the hymn, Hark the Angel, 
a half the Herald Angel sing. Do you remember? Uh, the Herald Angel sing. Peace on earth and mercy, my God and sinners reconcile. Do you see the vertical piece? God and sinners reconcile. Not peace among men. That's why there are so many wars, even today. In that day, also refers to the day when Jesus comes again to establish his messianic kingdom on earth, where there will be righteousness and peace. Remember in chapter 11, Isaiah pictures that peace in fantastic imagery. He pictures life in a paradise. Before sin entered the world, lions didn't eat the sheep, nor did the lepers eat the goats. You could have observed the bear and the cow grazing together and their young playing with each other. There was a perfect harmony and peace among every creature. If Adam and Eve did not sin and stayed in the Garden of Eden, their children could have led the animals. A little girl would put her hand into snake pit without any danger at all. A little boy could happily play with a cobra and both would enjoy the playtime. There would be perfect love between God and man and among all creation. Their knowledge of God would be personal filled with affection, free from fear. But when Adam and Eve, Eve disobeyed God by eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they became dead because they were cut off from the salt of life. And it took another tree, the tree of the cross, to reverse that curse and restore the future of God's people. The first period said Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the tree. By his wounds, you have been healed. So look at verse 1a again. In that day, you will say, I'll praise you, Lord. This is a personal expression of praise to God. So when you have tasted God's love and grace, we each personally can say, I'll praise you, Lord. This will be the expression of our hearts when we come to the Lord. And it, actually, it is, should be an expression of our hearts always, 24-7, 365 days. But do we do that? Many times we are filled with the complaints and the grumpiness because we live in a real world with a real problems. And we get angry and complain. So how can you have this expression of praise in our hearts always. Mostly, we have to remember what God has done uh, for us. So verse 1b says, although you are angry with me, your anger has turned away. So this verse tells us that God was angry with us, each one of us. Isaiah 53 verse 6 says, we all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. God created us for his glory to be with him and live for him. He created each person with a definite purpose. He created each of us to live according to his truth. But each one of us has turned to his own way. Each one of us thought that our way was the best and turned from God. So today, many people are seeking their own way, convinced that they are right. So many things that living a sexually immoral life, greedy lifestyle, or pleasure-seeking life will lead them happiness and blessing. So some seek us superficially, culturally, and habitually. And this makes God angry. So mo most people think that they are basically okay, at least better than the other guy. But God is angry with me and each of you because of our sins. Yet we praise God because somehow God's love and mercy overcame his anger. The verse 1 be says, although you are angry with me, your anger has turned away and you have comforted me. So Isaiah poetically says that God's anger turned away. So God found a way to pay the penalty of our sins. It was through the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
So Isaiah chapter 53, verse 6, it says, We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. This is the most beautiful description of what God has done for us. God laid on Jesus the iniquity of us all. God laid all our sins on Jesus the Messiah. God was angry with us because of our sins, but he loved us more. So that's Romans chapter 5 verse 8 describes God's love in this way. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we are still sinners, Christ died for us. God loved us so much, he overcame every barrier to bring us to him. God even sacrificed his one and only son on the cross to bring us to him. So when you realize this love for us, when you accept this love, then we can say, I will praise you, Lord, from the bottom of our hearts. So when you know God's saving grace, you can also say in verse 2, Surely God is my salvation. I will, not tr I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. You can say with a great confidence, surely God is my salvation. When God is our salvation, we can trust and not be afraid of anything. We know that the Lord, Lord himself, is our strength and my defense. The Lord does not send a representative to defend us. The Lord, Lord himself, is our strength and our defense. When you feel weak or attacked, sometimes someone verbally attacks you. The Lord himself is our strength and our defense. If someone wants to point out our sins and attack us, we really have nothing to say. Because we are sinners. We are guilty and so become powerless. But the Lord is our defense. The Lord defends us through Jesus' blood before our accusers. It is not because of our righteousness, but because the Lord, Lord himself, is our defense. So if you look at a footnote, the defense here can be also translated as a song. So God is our song. means that the Lord is our joy. Those who know God's salvation sing in their hearts. They are happy and a blessing, even in the times of difficulties. Because they can say with confidence, he has become my salvation. So we can sing the classic hymn. We sang the Lord, I need you. So I, 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 I may need help with this one. Okay, so let's sing. Let's sing. Where sin rises, your grace is small. Where grace is found, is where you are. Where you are. Lord. Only if it's Christ in me, Lord, I need you, Lord, I need you, Lord, I need you, my one defense. My righteousness, oh God, how I need you. Thank you. So look at verse 3. With joy, you draw water from the wells of salvation. So sometimes these, these illustrations are lost on us. We live in a very blessed time and country. When you want water, we, we just turn on the tap. And we turn off the tap. Very convenient. But in the time of Isaiah, water was very precious. Water took up part of their day of labors and tasks to be done. Women had to go outside the city, very open to the well, and drew water and bring it back every day. It was a, such a drudgery chore. Isaiah now describes that instead of being a task of drudgery, a daily routine, that we don't like it at all. He says, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. 
So this is referring to Jesus, the very living water. So remember the time when Jesus talked with the Samaritan woman at the well? The disciples went to the town to buy food and left Jesus behind. Jesus stayed the well at the, to rest. Jesus ran into a woman, began a conversation. It was a Samaritan woman whom the Jews did not want anything to do at all. She was an immoral woman, having had uh, the five husbands and now living with a boyfriend. She was thirsty for love. Yet Jesus talked with her and explained to her that in him is the living water. So Jesus says in John chapter 4, verse 13 and 14, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them spring of water and welling up to eternal life. And Jesus helped her to drink the living water. And she was so joyful. So remember last uh, uh, Sam's message last uh, Saturday, she went and uh, proclaimed to the, all the townspeople, I have found the Messiah. They witnessed to all the townspeople. Sometimes we think of salvation as the only at that moment when we come to faith in Christ. And he saves us once and for all from our sin and guilt. But uh, look at what Paul says in Romans chapter 13. Verse 11, salvation is nearer to us now than we first believed. So in other words, the salvation is still in the future. We don't have it all yet. Salvation will be completed when Jesus comes again and clothes us with a glorious resurrection body. So salvation is not just past and not just the future. Salvation is also God's appointed path of oasis through the wilderness from the salvation of escape from Egypt to the salvation of entrance into the promised land. So if you make it a first priority to drink from the wells of salvation every day, you will never lose your way in the wilderness. God guides us by the wells of salvation. So notice here, it says wells, not the, not the bowls or buckets. Not only are there enough of them all along the way, they will always have enough water to meet your need. Indeed, way beyond your need. So if Isaiah had said, you draw water from the bowls of salvation or from the buckets of salvation, we might worry that there will not be enough water. Water might be gone. But where is it like that? A well is self-replenishing. You will draw bucket after bucket, and there, will, there is still more water. So this is important for understanding the wells of salvation. If we didn't understand this, we might stumble over the fact that the word is plural. It's, I just say you draw water from the wells of salvation, not the well, not singular, it's plural. So if you are crossing a desert, or passing through the wilderness, you will not do good any good to have a well at the beginning and well at the end. A well in Egypt, a well in the promised land. There have to be wells along the way. Otherwise, you drop dead in the wilderness, in the sand. So the wells of salvation are plural. There are as many as your days, and they are located everywhere you go. So the reason for this is wonderfully simple and deep because God is your salvation. God is everywhere. And your wells are the places and times when you come to him. And there is no place and no time when he is not ready to meet you. So this is what verse 2 says. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength and my defense. He has become my salvation. God is your salvation, and the wells of salvation are the places and the times you draw near to God and drink from the springs of his truth and power and love and his glory. Look at verse 4. In that day, you will say, give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Proclaim that his name is exalted. 
So in that day, again, refers to the day we received the Messiah and God's salvation. So in that day, we say, Our Lord, give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name. So proclaim his name means to honor him. We want Jesus' name honored above all names. We want Jesus' name to be glorified. We want to proclaim his name. So we honor his name by making known among the nations what God has done. We do that by teaching the Bible and teaching what Jesus has done on the cross by dying for our sins. So look at verse 5. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to the, to the all the world. In that day, we sing to the Lord. Singing is the expression of our hearts. So we don't have to be skilled at singing. It doesn't matter you sing out of tune like me. What matters is that we sing to the Lord out of joy and thanks. And the world is very difficult and painful place for many. We hear about terrible suffering of Ukrainians and Russians, Jews and Palestinians. There are many hurting and suffering people, even in, in Canada also. And God wants us to proclaim his salvation through the whole world. And the Lord wants us to sing his praise, showing our joy and thanksgiving to the world. So at the University of Toronto, we meet many students who don't know God's salvation. They don't drink from the words of salvation. That's why they are miserable. And what they need is to see our joy and thanks we get from the words of salvation. And they need to hear how God has done glorious things in and through us so that they can also trust in God. So may God fill us with the songs of joy to God and make known what he has done to the whole world in 2024. So this chapter concludes in, with verse 6. Shout aloud, sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. We shout and sing for joy because the Holy One of Israel is great among us. God is the great God. He's performing <clears throat> a great work. He's active and powerful, living and working in and out through us. Sometimes we may think that God is not doing anything. But God, the Holy One of Israel, is great among us. He's doing his great work. If you open your eyes, spiritual your eyes, you will see. He's saving lives. Most important, he's marching toward. All the history is marching toward the great restoration of his kingdom when Jesus comes again. So in conclusion, 2,000 years ago, Jesus came as a baby and an angel from heaven to bring his salvation. In Jesus, we find the salvation, strength, and living water for our soul. So let's trust in him and not be afraid because Jesus will come again in power and glory as a king of kings and lord of lords to bring righteousness and peace and make everything right. So for that reason alone, we can sing a song of praise every day in the new year, 2024. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, uh, may God help us to draw life and hope from the wells of salvation every day in the new year. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.